So in this video, I will try to show how to disprove a statement or an example by uh, using a counterexample that is to show uh, that this statement is not true or it's not valid. So for example, we need to disprove that n square plus n plus 17 is always prime. So if we start choosing random values, it's going to take a lot of time. For example, n equals to 1, it becomes 19. It is a prime number. n equals to 2, it becomes what? 4 plus 7 plus 2 plus 7 10 it becomes 23 it's also a prime number so we need to find a value for which this whole value does not result into something which is a prime so if we choose 17 it becomes 17 square plus 17 plus 17 so factorizing 17 17 out of it 17 plus 1 plus 1 so 17 into 19 so since this term is a multiple of 17 and 19 the result is not a prime number because for a number to be prime it has to be a multiple of 1 and the number itself but since this is a multiple of 17 and 19 so the result is not a prime number so counterexamples, uh, questions of counterexamples varies. For example, uh, they can also ask if n is a prime number, we need to disprove that n plus 2 is also a prime number. So if we choose 1, uh, if we choose, uh, suppose if we, uh, we select 3, if n is 3, n plus 2 is 5, it's a prime number. So next 5, 5 plus 2, 7, it's a prime number. But if we select 7, 7 plus 2, 9, this is not a prime number. So the statement which they said uh, that if n is prime, n plus 2 will also be prime is not valid anymore for this case. So this is a counterexample which makes the whole statement invalid. So uh, proving something by contradiction is almost similar. For example, we need to show that root 2 is irrational. So at first we will uh, start the maths by assuming that root 2 is actually rational and then after simplifying we will show that it's not rational proving that it's irrational. Okay so for that we need to understand what is a rational number. For any number to be rational first of all it has to be in a uh, format so that we can um, sh uh, we can find the ratio of that. For example, if we are writing 2 by 3, it is a rational number because we can write it in fractions. And it has to be in simplest form. So, to, for a number to be rational, it has to be in its simplest form and you should be able to write it in ratio form. As in, it has to be in a fraction form. You should be able to write it in a fraction form. So, for example, if you are talking about 2, we can write it as 2 by 1. So, for a number to be rational, we need to be uh, uh, we need the number to be in simplest and uh, ratio format. So, if we assume that root two is an irrational number, assuming that root two sorry root two is a rational number, so we can say that root two equals p by q, where p and q are both integer values, positive integer values. And P and Q are in uh, in their simplest form. So these are the assumption we are making. So if root 2 equals to P by Q, by cross multiplying you get root 2 Q equals P, then squaring both sides of the equation, we get 2 Q square equals P square. So at this point, we, uh, we can see that 2q square is a multiple of 2, right? Since it's, uh, it, it is a multiple of 2, it is divisible by 2. So since p square equals this, that is p square should also be a multiple of 2. So now we can see that 2p square and p square, this whole thing shares a common multiple of 2. So since they both have a common multiple, multiple of 2, it means p by q, which we initially assumed were rational, are not. So these are irrational. So 
root 2 is also irrational because it contradicts with the initial assumption that they were in their simplest form because if it's in, uh, in its simplest form there cannot be a multiple for example uh, if you take any value uh, 6 by 9 it is not in their simplest form because they share a common multiple here which is 3 so since we have a common multiple of 2 p by q was not in their simplest form that means we cannot assume that p by q gives you a rational number by that we can conclude that root 2 is an irrational number